Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Thursday, May 12th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. A changing climate means communities throughout the region will need to adapt. But what that looks like isn't clear, and it's more complicated than planting a few trees or installing more solar panels. We can't divorce environment from economic performance or from societal benefit, right? They're all intertied with each other and interdependent. Coming up, St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt examines how community leaders want to eliminate racial and economic bias when improving the local environment. The quest to redraw Missouri's congressional districts has hit another snag. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports on how judges are closer to potentially intervening. Missouri senators were supposed to hold a hearing on Wednesday about a map the House passed earlier this week. But since the Senate never recessed, the committee hearing had to be moved to Thursday afternoon. GOP senators have quarreled with each other for months about redistricting, and GOP Senator Dan Hageman of Cosby says it's possible legislators may not pass something before adjournment. Certainly had a lot of discussion early on in the session that took up a lot of time dealing with the maps, and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to discuss them again, but we are running out of time. Federal judges could draw the map if lawmakers fail to act by Friday afternoon. In Jefferson City, I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Another member of the St. Louis Board of Aldermen is resigning. John Collins Muhammad has announced in a tweet that he will be leaving his 21st Ward seat today. He apologized to his family and constituents for, quote, my shortcomings and my mistakes, and asked for prayers for him and his family. A source close to Muhammad says the alderman is facing legal trouble but is not providing details. A special election for Muhammad's seat will be held in late July or early August. The winner would hold office until April 2023 and run for re-election in a new ward. Heather Navarro and Sarah Martin resigned this year due to conflicts of interest. Illinois officials expect thousands more abortion patients to come to the state if the U.S. Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports Governor J.B. Pritzker and other politicians were in the Metro East yesterday to voice their commitment to abortion access. Planned Parenthood officials say they expect 14,000 more abortion patients a year to come to the organization's clinic in Fairview Heights if Roe is overturned. Illinois Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton said 75 percent of patients who come to the clinic across the river from St. Louis are from out of state. That's thousands of people who have to overcome tremendous barriers just to receive health care. Illinois is one of the only states in the Midwest that has strengthened abortion protections in recent years. The majority Democratic legislature in 2019 codified the right to abortion in state law. In contrast, Missouri, Kentucky, and many other states surrounding Illinois have laws that would ban the procedure once Roe v. Wade is overturned. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. A reproductive rights clinic based in Tennessee will soon have a location in Carbondale. Choices provides birth control, abortion, and other services. This new clinic will be a three-minute drive from Carbondale's Amtrak station. Executive Director Jennifer Pepper says Choices is expecting out-of-state residents to come to the Carbondale Clinic. Missouri and other neighboring states have trigger laws that will ban abortion if Roe v. Wade is overturned. The budget on its way to Missouri Governor Mike Parson includes funding to raise starting teacher salaries in Missouri to $38,000. But as St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports, it's not a permanent solution. More than 90 percent of Missouri's school districts and charters have at least one staff member who could be affected by the teacher pay raise. That includes Warren County outside of St. Louis. But Superintendent Greg Klingensmith says for now, the district is only changing pay next year. What we're hearing is it's just one-time money, it's just one time, and so we would need additional revenue to continue to pay at that level. Uh, So we are just going to maintain our current salary schedule, but but pay additional this year one time to, uh, to those teachers that are below that. The state budget offers an optional grant next school year to pay for 70% of the raise. The other 30 will have to come from the local district. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio.
The effect of climate change is becoming more pronounced throughout the St. Louis region. That means communities will need environmental improvements tailored to their individual needs and economic realities. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmid reports. The Reverend Roderick Burton clearly remembers when a nonprofit approached his North St. Louis church with a plan to manage excess water from large rainstorms. Burton says the proposal was a rainwater catch basin at the local community center. What they were saying was, well, look, you know, we would do the project and then afterwards there'll just be little cost for you to sustain it. And they were just saying how we needed to do this. The project also would have eliminated parking at the community center, something Burton says was a deal breaker in the end. Parents need to be able to get their kids to our child care center. People in the community needed the various programs and resources that we had and need the space to be able to get there so they're not on a dangerous street. He says the principle of the project aligned with values at his congregation, New Northside Missionary Baptist Church, which has been an environmental advocate for about a decade. In theory, yeah, we were for it, but it just was not going to work for us. Burton says it was a situation where the outside group wanted the project more than community members did. Other St. Louisans have similar stories. Charlie Cooksey grew up in North St. Louis, not far from Burton's church. She says she was baffled when roads like West Florissant and Natural Bridge suddenly had bike lanes. Cooksey says those roads see lots of traffic, making them dangerous for cyclists. I still find frustration when I drive down those major streets in my family's neighborhood and realize like, these bike lanes were not designed with the residents in mind, not to say folks don't like bikes. Cooksey is now the CEO of WePower, an organization she founded to build economic and political power in black and Latino communities. She says her work includes asking people in majority black and brown neighborhoods across the region how they define a community's vitality. Continuously, we kept hearing the environment, we kept hearing green space. Projects to develop these and other climate resilience are gaining steam. For example, Illinois 2021 Climate and Equitable Jobs Act gives money and other resources to places where the economy is tied to fossil fuels and for communities, often of color, that have been overburdened with past pollution. Maurice Mouillet is a climate advisor with the International Environmental Advocacy Group, NRDC, and a city council member in Richmond Heights. We can't divorce environment from economic performance or from societal benefit, right? They're all intertied with each other and interdependent. He says prioritizing one over the others will negate any possible benefit. Mouillet says it's not hard to redesign a road with more trees or add renewables at a community center. The challenge is in making sure those solutions fit what locals want. You can't go to a standard because there's no standard for that. You have to develop that on the fly, right? And you have to make sure you develop it for the long term. This will look different for places throughout the St. Louis region, even if the environmental challenges are similar. Each area, from urban to rural, has specific economic conditions that change what's needed. Pollution is so hard because it's often invisible. Patricia Shuba is the president of the Labadee Environmental Organization, a group of residents that pushes for stricter rules on the local coal-fired power plant. She says the Labadee Energy Center in Franklin County has contaminated nearby land and water, but... We We impact the air pollution of a whole region. So one could say part of the just transition from Labadee is to remediate for that air pollution in St. Louis City. And I would agree with that. Shuba says she wants locals like her to have the chance to decide what happens next. There's an obligation because our communities, much like the coal mining communities in Appalachia, have paid a price for everyone to have convenient and cheap energy. Burton echoes this thought and says the new green economy can be as exclusive and unjust as the old one. There's gotta be equity built in and not lip service. You got to actually take the time and do the legwork and have the humility to listen to people in the community. Cooksey agrees and adds local residents are going to know what their neighborhoods need the most. The solutions that come from community, that have buy-in from community, will be the most sustainable versus a corporation coming in and doing a few projects here and there. She says good intentions aren't good enough, but they can be a starting point. I'm Eric Schmidt, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I am out tomorrow. Shayla Farzan will be at the helm of this daily extravaganza. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.